Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of today's Youth. And today we're delighted to be joined by uh, Nagwa Shinewi. She's a graduate of the Faculty of Law, uh, Alexandria University. She studied also international relations. She will tell us more about her education and her career. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Nagwa. Thank you for having me. Uh, Nagwa, tell me more about uh, the choice of law. Why did you cho uh, choose law as your major field of study? I've always been passionate about the field ever since I was a child. And I decided when I was 16 that I was going to go into the field. And I begged my parents for it. They wanted me to study business or to be a doctor. But I wanted to be a lawyer, to be able to help people. And then after I finished university, I decided to study international law because I was very interested in politics and how the world goes around. You also studied inter international relations and negotiations, I think, in Netherlands? Yes, I did. T tell me more about this. Uh, it was a diploma, right? Yes, it was a diploma. So I decided to go to Groningen. Uh, that's uh, a place in the Netherlands, and it has very strong programs. Why I chose that field? After some time, I got interested in corporate law and mm -hmm. business law, and I wanted to work in, in international expansion because Egypt has a lot of uh, opportunities for investments. So I wanted to understand how can we um, attract those investors, um, how to deal with them, and then international law when it comes to investing, and then arbitration, which is the most preferred method for investors worldwide whenever they move out of their country to invest in another country. Hence why I chose it. <laughs> Well, uh, this is a very important topic, actually, uh, attracting foreign investment. Uh, how do you think we can attract foreign investment to Egypt, I mean, since you studied this uh, specific area? Um, the way I see it, we've been doing a lot of great work so far in the field to attract foreign investors. Uh, the devaluation of the Egyptian pound, that helped a lot, because right now, um, the currency, after being devalued, the dollar or any foreign currency is worth a lot, so people want to invest to, uh, because Egypt is a very young market. Mm -hmm. Around 60% of our population are under 30, so there are a lot of consumers. Mm -hmm. But the way people look at it, or the normal Egyptian looks at it, oh, foreign investors, that's not good. Actually, it's very good. They're going to create new jobs. Uh, people are going to learn new skills. A lot of foreign currencies being uh, um, put into the country, which helps our economy. Right. Uh, Nagwa, we're going to go to a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, dear viewers, and once again with my guest, uh, Nagwa. Nagwa, uh, we want to talk more about youth empowerment. Uh, we've seen a lot of initiatives taking place here in Egypt during the past 10 years specifically to empower youth, among which is the uh, presidential leadership program and uh, uh, digital uh, transformation initiatives. Uh, tell me more about those initiatives, and you were part of them. Yes, I, I was a part of the presidential leadership program. Um, why I decided to apply for the presidential leadership program. I've heard a lot of good things and I've seen the results. Um, Egypt nowadays is trying to empower youth. How are they trying to empower youth? A part of it is the presidential leadership program. It's done through practical um, training and educational training. We're trained in politics. We're trained in administration. Uh, we're trained uh, on the ground in different aspects. And a lot of people nowadays, a lot of youth, are allowed to participate in the political life in Egypt. Unlike yeah. before, now we have um, governors and governor assistants who are youth. We've never had this before. Yes. That's right. Um, uh, as for digital transformation, as I said before, Egypt is a very young country. And to be illiterate nowadays, it's not just being illiterate as in you don't know how to read and write. Being illiter illiterate is not knowing anything about technology. And unfortunately, a lot of my generation, they don't know anything beyond uh, Instagram, Facebook, social media in general. Even though this is the future, AI is taking over. What Egypt is trying to do 
uh, is to be a leading country in technology. How are they doing that? Uh, there is an institute called the ITI, where Egypt gives Egyptian completely fully funded programs in their chosen fields, whether it's business analysis, programming, cybersecurity. It's really wonderful. As well as there, there is a scholarship called FWD, where you can apply and you can study marketing or business analysis, among other things, and you can study it from home. Online? Online. It's a great opportunity yeah. and it doesn't cost you a thing. And it How can does the selection process and acceptance take place in this program? For presidential leadership or? No, I mean for the digital transformation and the digital uh, courses and, uh, that you were just talking about. Oh, you apply? The that the uh, youth can uh, do it online, you yes. said. Uh, you just apply online for the FWD yeah. and then you can enter and then they have different levels. Beginner, where they teach you everything from scratch, and then intermediate, and then advanced. Why this is important? Not only do you study from home and completely for free, this creates a lot of job opportunities for our youth, and they can even work through online. Through the programs themselves? No, not through the programs, but the programs are accredited. Yeah. And they're very important. Certified? And yes, they are certified. And, and they just apply online and they go into a selection process and then they get accepted? That's for the ITI, for the FWD, no. You just apply online with your national ID. You don't need anything else. Even I took it. I studied uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, how far do you think Egypt has achieved with regards to the uh, digital transformation? I mean, compared to other countries, I know uh, India is a leading uh, country in this regard. Okay. Egypt has had a head start. Egypt, uh, India had had a, a head start. India started since the mid 80s. Unfortunately, Egypt has recently started, but so far we've taken huge milestones. So, so far we're doing great. We're actually catching up. So, so another country took around 30 years. We've been doing a great job in less than 10. Yeah. Thanks to the president's uh, initiatives. And he had a lot more initiatives than just that. Well, uh, let's go to this short break and we'll be right back to continue talking about uh, youth empowerment and uh, also female empowerment here in Egypt. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again with my guest uh, Nagwa. We were talking about youth empowerment and female empowerment. Uh, uh, how do you see the future for females here in Egypt? We've seen them taking a lot of the rights, specifically during uh, the last 10 years. We've seen women representation in the parliament and uh, we've seen uh, ministers. So uh, how do you see that uh, from your own opinion as one of the youth? Actually, as a female as well. I see a bright future ahead of us. Why that? First of all, we have a quota now in the parliament. So the government tries to help us to be more involved in the political life. Unlike before, where women were kind of authorized. Nowadays, women are encouraged to apply everywhere. The second part is even uh, female entrepreneurs the government has uh, a lot of programs for us to apply and it made the uh, bank loans easier before they were very hard to get as a woman. Not because it was against the law, but the regulations and bureaucracy was too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a very bright future ahead of us. Right. Uh, finally, uh, would you tell me how do you see the significance of uh, environment, climate change, as a main topic uh, for the future of the youth here in Egypt? Um, actually, Egypt just held COP27, which is the most important event for climate change worldwide. Next year is going to be in Emirates. And this whole event was organized by youth. Uh, so youth were given an opportunity to organize an international event where kings, presidents attended and they discussed important things related to climate change, how climate change is going to affect our future. Unfortunately, 
a lot of countries are not willing to pay the climate bill and this is what Egypt has been calling for. Uh, due to industrialization, um, the planet is suffering. Hence why we have increased temperature, um, lack of water, desertification. This affects the youth because it's going to affect their jobs, it's going to affect their livelihood. So I see Egypt nowadays is doing a great job in that. Nowadays we have recycling. Uh, water, uh, uh, we're taking water from the sea and uh, it's going through a lot of process so we will be able to drink it. Uh, urbanization as well, as well as agriculture. Mm -hmm. And the government, the best part, we're being involved as youth in a lot of those projects and initiatives. It's not just, we're not treated as children anymore. Right, By well, uh, as you've just mentioned, um, Egyptian youth are looking forward to a great future here in Egypt uh, as also the, uh, after the success of uh, the COP27 and uh, uh, working a lot on uh, climate change issues, uh, um, female empowerment, uh, youth empowerment. Uh, we're looking to a bright future for our youth. Uh, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, dear viewers, that brings us to the end of this edition of today's Youth. Many thanks for watching and don't forget to join us uh, next week, same time today. Goodbye.